Hi folks, Rob Goller here. Thanks for joining me again for our weekly chat about local history. Uh, appreciate the support of the project as always. Um, this week's topic comes from um, somebody, well, two people actually asked me this week. I get the question a lot, but um, it seemed interesting that two people asked me about old newspapers this week um, and what to do with them. Uh, people find, how many of us have found old newspapers either in the wall of the house or in an attic or in a box or in, in a uh, grandma's old dresser drawer as you're going through um, things? And um, we, we have this old newspaper and we don't know what to do with it. Most people don't want to throw it out. <laughs> they feel like there might be some value to it. Uh, so they, they're, a lot of us are hesitant to throw out old newspapers. Uh, so they call the historian uh, of their town or the historical society, or they post on, on a social media page, what do I do with this? What do I do with this old newspaper? And in uh, the cases this week that I was asked about it, they were, they asked me what, how to preserve an old newspaper um, and whether or not uh, you could laminate it. Uh, don't do that. We'll talk about that in a second. No, you don't laminate um, an old newspaper, even though you've seen that probably in many places where there's been newspapers laminated. Uh, but w how do you conserve or preserve an old newspaper that's uh, that you found? And the first question I ask is, is it worth saving for you? Um, wh why would you want to save the old paper? Paper Is it just because it's interesting and neat um, or does it have some sort of value? First things first, uh, the question that I get asked all the time is, is there any monetary value to old newspapers? 95% of the time, no. Um, old newspapers, you can even go on, you can go on eBay or some of these auction sites online and you'll see people selling papers from the day J.F. Kennedy died or um, the moon landing. Uh, and you'll, they might get a, a couple bucks, um, maybe and by a couple, maybe 10, 20, 30. You might see them even higher than that, um, even in mint condition. Uh, be careful also because on those big days, uh, the moon landing, JFK's assassination, Lincoln's assassination, if you want to go back even further, um, some newspapers did reprints. So they're not the original paper that the newspaper did souvenir reprints. Still might have some value, but they're not an original paper that you would have found on the newsstands. So from a historical standpoint, they're not an original copy of the, of the newspaper. They're a reprint. Um, but even in those cases, the actual physical newspaper is not worth a lot of money. You can certainly search, uh, put it online, try to sell it, go ask somebody, um, uh, put it out there and maybe get something. Uh, and also, if you, when you see newspapers on eBay or places like that, that's what and you see a price. Oftentimes people will say, oh, they're selling it on eBay for $50. Well, they're trying to get $50. It mean, doesn't mean they're going to ultimately get the $50. And as they say, things are only worth what people are willing to pay. So you might get 50 bucks, but um, in, in, in most cases you won't. Um, and just because something's put for sale, the asking price does not mean that's what it's ultimately worth or what it's going to be. Um, so monetary value, um, no. Uh, newspapers, generally speaking, do not have a high monetary value old copies of newspapers. Um, however, if you have a, a copy of a paper from, you know, uh, a, you know, from the 1700s or the early 1800s uh, um, that is in mint condition, that maybe was a newspaper that was published for a very short period of time, um, that may be of interest and someone might be willing to pay for it. Um, the, uh, an, uh, from a historian standpoint and a local history standpoint, I'm interested, I it actually was looking for old newspapers of titles in East Aurora. We've had over about 20 newspapers published in, in East Aurora um, and, and um, finding a copy of each issue. So there would be value there. Um, but for the most part, newspapers have more, more than a monetary value, have a nostalgic value and a histor historical content value. The information in the newspaper is worth more money than what the paper itself and the copy you have itself. So um, if you find an old newspaper, it's interesting to read through. You can learn something about it, but the actual newspaper itself probably doesn't have a lot of monetary value. 
so much so um, this is the case that a lot of museums and historical societies and libraries will not accept newspapers. And actually, you can uh, go on like the Buffalo History Museum. They, they say in most cases do not accept old newspapers, especially those in very bad condition. And uh, there's a couple reasons. One is in most cases, 90% of the time, they already have a copy of that newspaper. So for instance, um, people will call um, the historian's office and or they'll stop me at the, at the grocery store and say, hey, I found this old paper from 1923. Um, would you like to see it? And I say, oh, of course, I'm interested in seeing what you found. It's interesting to, to, to know where you found it. Maybe you've, uh, it was found in a wall in your house. But a copy of the Easter Advertiser from 1923, just an ordinary week, we already have copies of that, and we already have it microfilmed, and we already have, in many cases, it digitized. So the information has already been preserved. Um, and it's not that we're not interested, and a lot of historical societies aren't interested in your copy of the newspaper, but there's actually a risk of bringing that copy of a newspaper into an archive um, more so than preserving it. So especially if we already have a copy of it. So um, a lot of times if you find a copy of a newspaper in a wall or in an attic, it's it's not in the best of condition, number one, and it will fall apart and make a mess. Uh, especially later on, um, the pa quality of paper in the 1800s was better than uh, the quality of paper going into the 20th century, as especially during the Great Depression. Uh, so the paper it gets brittle. So you have a brittle paper that's falling apart and you're bringing it in and you're making a mess of it. But also, um, uh, the, it might contain mites, it might contain insects, for real. Uh, it's not just your mother saying that, <laughs> that don't touch something because it might have uh, insects. It really might. And then by bringing it into a collection of, of other things, you might actually be contaminating. So that's why a lot of historical societies won't, will ask you just to keep your, your copy of the newspaper, especially if it's not very unique. Um, so for you, for so what I suggest is people, if you find a newspaper that's really really cool, um, uh, and it is it is true, people did hide newspapers in in uh, in walls. A lot of times they would have fallen maybe from an attic through a hole down the hall down the wall. There's all sorts of reasons why newspapers end up where they do. Um, they might put it in the wall for the date might be significant. Um, uh, so that's that usually happened I, uh, between the World Wars, the 20th century. That seems to be when a lot of these newspapers, um, historians have found that, and we've just found that anecdotally when people bring in a newspaper um, that it was preserved in a wall. Or um, uh, a lot of people liked to scrapbook back then as well, so they would cut out things and put them in scrapbooks and save them that way. Um, but um, but that that was sort of a thing is to hide them in the wall there was no significance to what the newspaper contained it was just the date so if you find an old newspaper that you think is neat um, my suggestion is to read it look through it learn something about it if it's very brittle take a picture we have this great thing on our cell phones that we can you know just snap a picture of the of the pages um, and zoom in so you're reading the paper you're learning the information that's in it without touching uh, the brittle part of it and uh, and there probably nine out of ten times you're not going to save the old newspaper. If it's from a very important day, that's great. Um, you might want to preserve it. Uh, even copies of the last Courier Express here in Buffalo, that was a big thing that people kept, or the moon landing. Or, there's so many copies of them out there that they're not as unique as you would think. Um, they're special, but they're not as unique. There's a lot of copies out there. The last issue of the Courier Express, um, people are donating them all the time to uh, historical societies locally um, because that it's a special edition. It was the last edition, but it really, they're, they're, it's not rare. Um, if you want to save those, that's one thing. But if it's an ordinary week of a newspaper, really think about whether you want to preserve it. So one person actually asked me, they're like, Should, how do I preserve it? And I says, well, if your grand, if there's an article about your grandmother on the front page that you want to preserve or, or something like that, it might be worth going to uh, cons uh, either a frame shop or a conservationist uh, conservator, somebody who could uh, properly frame it with the proper uh, glass. There are several in our town here uh, and South Town's Buffalo area you could do that to. Um, take the item and say, hey, this is what I want to do, and they can offer advice on how to best preserve it. If you want to show it off, frame it, like if your grandmother was on the front page of it. If it's an ordinary...
newspaper, why would you, it may not be something you want to even preserve. Take pictures of it. Um, you found it in your attic, that's great. And maybe it's, you could say goodbye to it. Um, or put it in, um, put it in an acid-free sleeve uh, if you can find one that fits, it's big enough and you want to show it to people who come over to say, I found this in the wall. But really kind of think about whether it's worth preserving. Um, in many cases, it might not be. Um, it's just something neat. You can show it off for a little while. Um, and I know we don't want to throw things out, but newspapers are really tough to preserve. And if there are already copies and there are already uh, uh, um, the information that the newspapers contained is already um, is already out there, then there might not be a, a necessity to save that old newspaper that was found in your wall. Um, but again, if it's something like, you know, the local newspaper, especially if there's an engagement, you might just want to clip out the clipping, scan that clipping. Um, you might not want to, to um, uh, save the entire, entire newspaper. Again, especially if there's the entire newspaper um, available somewhere else. So you can just clip what you want to clip out of it and then um, dispose of the rest of the newspaper. And I know it's, you know, might be hard to hear a historian say throw something out, but part of a hit of uh, archiving and um, and cataloging is deciding what things to save and what things not to save. And in this case, newspapers probably are in the don't save category. Um, now, with that said, I had a gentleman a couple years ago who had a, you know, several years, they had subscribed to a newspaper and they... Uh, um had saved them all in boxes probably 15 years of these newspapers um and called the historian's office and said hey i have fifth you know the 15 years worth of this publication would you be interested and i said well yes because we did not have that publication and he had saved it um and so in that case and it was well preserved and we can get them digitized and that sort of thing but your your one-off copies of newspapers found in drawers or in the attic that that is different um, and especially if they're brittle and they're um and they've been uh, sitting around for a while so um long story short about newspapers uh they're not as uh monetarily not as worth as uh, as much as people sometimes think and they have much more nostalgic value and much more information value than they do um, physical value. So keep that in mind. Um, and you can certainly put them out there for sale if you uh, if you um, wish, especially the issues that are um, of, from special days, if you want to part with them. Uh, but your ordinary everyday newspapers um, are probably um, I've seen them on eBay, and I and I don't see how. Um, they get a lot of money. But if you're that concerned about it, put them out there. It's, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, but when it comes to trying to donate them someplace, uh, don't be offended if a place says no thank you, a historical society or a library. Um, and that goes for newspapers and other artifacts as well. Um, a lot of historical societies and museums and archives need to have a laser focus. Uh, for instance, here in East Aurora, it has to be related to the town of Aurora or East Aurora. Um, to be accepted into the archival collection just due to space. Newspapers do take up a lot of room, uh, so uh, and uh, you, we have to keep a, an eye on the entire collection and whether that um, item will fit. So uh, that goes for newspapers and everything else as well. So don't be offended if they say no thank you. Um, they're just, um, they just can't take everything. Um, and, and newspapers, especially ones they already have, are not going to be a priority. And that's just the way it is. Uh, so enjoy the newspaper you found in your attic, in the in the drawer, or, uh, in the wall. Um, but it, beyond you, it probably doesn't have much much value. Um, and share it on social media. Uh, people do definitely find it interesting. Um, and you can read the context of an event. So even like if you have an old newspaper of the moon landing, I always like to read the back pages, the society pages, the sports pages, just to put into context. Um, there were other things happening that day uh, and uh, uh, surrounding these big major events, and you can get that from an old newspaper. Um, and, uh, and sometimes you're just reading like the prices of the advertising, things like that. Uh, but really think about whether it's worth uh, your energy to save a newspaper that has no real significance beyond the fact that it was found in, in a crawl space somewhere.
So again, thank you for joining me for our weekly chat on local history. Um, uh, I'm Rob Goller. Again, uh, I am the town and village historian, but um, these videos and a lot of my research are not officially connected to my position as town and village historian. Again, uh, this idea came up from people asking me questions. So if you have any ideas uh, you want me to chat about, uh, please put them in the comments or send me a private message. Uh, in the coming weeks, as we get closer and closer to Election Day, there's still a lot of uh, inf interesting connections between East Aurora and elections and presidents and presidential elections. So I promise we're going to talk about that in the coming weeks. Thanks again for joining me, and thank you for keeping history alive. We'll talk soon. Thanks.